an uproar over the president's AIDS testing plan, a clear road to the summit, and what happens now to that teenage pilot in Moscow. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. President Reagan's plan for dealing with AIDS is being criticized tonight as inadequate and insensitive by activist groups and by many health professionals. The most controversial element is the president's call for mandatory AIDS testing for immigrants and federal prisoners. Critics say that testing should be voluntary, not mandatory, and that there must be assurances of confidentiality and counseling. As NBC's Robert Bazell reports tonight, this controversy has become the centerpiece of an international AIDS conference in Washington. Thank you very when much. When Surgeon General C. Everett Koop addressed the conference this morning, he received a standing ovation from many of the scientists and healthcare workers. You're embarrassing me. Koop is popular because he has opposed mandatory testing to find carriers of the AIDS virus. And he has advocated education as the major tool to fight AIDS. And we dare not respond with anything less than our very best effort. Welcome. But there appeared to be divisions in the administration. Last night at a dinner to raise money for AIDS, President Reagan was booed when he urged more testing, including mandatory testing of federal prisoners and aliens trying to enter the United States. This is in addition to the testing already underway in our military and foreign service. Now let me turn to what the states can do. Vice President Bush got the same reception today at the AIDS conference when he repeated the president's proposals. And additionally, we are encouraging the states to offer routine testing for those who seek marriage licenses and for those who visit sexually transmitted disease or drug abuse clinics. At the conclusion of the speech, Bush, concerned about the heckling, asked Assistant Secretary of Health Robert Windham, who was that, a gay group out there? Who was that, a gay group out there? Later at a news conference, Wyndham denied hearing the remark. Well, when I turned around to uh, hear him or to look at him, I heard the applause and the noises, and I was just saying congratulations and thank you. But many of those attending the meeting heard Bush, and they were upset. The fact that he thinks it's some gay group really reflects the administration's lack of understanding of the significance of recommending mandatory testing. During the conference, several dozen demonstrators, many representing gay organizations, were arrested near the White House. The District of Columbia police wore yellow rubber gloves. The police said this was a routine procedure, but many charged that it showed an irrational fear of AIDS. Among the scientific matters discussed today were studies showing that a higher and higher percentage of people infected with the virus are developing AIDS. Researchers estimate that one and a half million Americans carry the virus. Many believe that almost all of them eventually will develop AIDS. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Washington. The Surgeon General C. Everett Koop is with me from Washington tonight. Dr. Koop, you have been critical of mandatory testing. Why haven't you been able to persuade the president of your point of view on this issue? Well, I think I have, as a matter of fact. Uh, the president came out last night at the AMFAR uh, research dinner, and uh, he spoke about five separate things. Uh, it's mandatory uh, to have the public health service uh, inform immigration and naturalization about any disease that is infectious. So that is statutory, and there's no choice in that matter. Uh, prisoners uh, in the federal system uh, are now under discussion with the Department of Justice and there has been no decision about how that will be handled. Uh, he asked the question whether we should or should not move further into federal institutions such as the veterans and perhaps test some of them. And the most controversial thing, I think, was uh, over premarital testing. But the way he worded it uh, suits me completely because what he said was that he urged the states to offer routine testing premaritally. Now, anything that you offer is not mandatory. And when he came to the end of his speech, he concluded by saying, I should think everybody who's getting married would want to know. I was just saying that a million and a half people in this country are now infected with the AIDS virus. How many are going to die by 1991 in your judgment? It's hard to tell. About 65% of those that we have followed seem to get into trouble with one of the AIDS-related diseases. But uh, there are some research scientists that believe if uh, you live long enough, everybody who is infected with the virus will eventually have the disease. 
Well, we're talking then of a million and a half or 800,000 people at the very minimum. Dr. Coop, thanks very much for being with us tonight. Yes, sir. And the U.S. Supreme Court ruled today that the U.S. Customs Service can run drug tests on workers who want promotions to drug enforcement jobs. The court rejected a union argument that these tests are an unwarranted invasion of privacy. This is the first time that the high court has ruled on mandatory testing for public workers. The court also decided not to rule on a suit brought by Japanese Americans claiming that their constitutional rights were violated when they were interned during World War II. The high court decided to send this issue to a special appeals court, which which considers claims against the federal government. A Japanese-American group is suing for billions of dollars in damages since the government confiscated the property of those sent to those camps. Also coming up here tonight on NBC Nightly News, Bob Abernathy with a special segment report on the question of whether schools should teach values, what's right and what's wrong in a society experiencing the Iran-Contra affair, the Wall Street scandal, and college sports scandals. And Maria Shriver tonight with a profile of the award-winning actress Marley Matlin, talented, beautiful, and deaf. When I need a laxative, I use Dolcolax. Doris Jones talks about Dolcolax. I like Dolcolax because it's very mild and gentle and dependable. Dolcolax, tablets and suppositories. Dolcolax works every single time. Back in 78, Mazda taught the sports car world a lesson about what you get for what you pay. Well, they're still doing it. This new RX-7 SE comes with a bunch of good stuff, like aluminum wheels. There's power steering, even a stereo, all standard. Not only that, this new RX-7 beats the Porsche 944 to 60, and also beats it by close to 12 grand. I guess old Mazda's still giving them a lesson or two. I travel a lot of miles, so I can't let arthritis pain slow me down. I used to take aspirin or Tylenol. Today, I take Advil. Advil has a non-prescription strength of the medicine in the prescription brand Motrin. You know, just one Advil is as effective as two regular strength Tylenol. And like Tylenol, Advil doesn't upset my stomach. For hours of relief from minor arthritis pain, nothing works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Today, you need an insurance company that's sure-footed. A company that looks out for you year after year. A company with experience. You need the Hartford. When you need us most, we're at our best. That's the Hartford difference. A major obstacle on the road to a superpower summit was cleared today by the West German government. It approved, but with a major exception, the Soviet Union's so-called double zero proposal to eliminate short and medium range nuclear missiles from Europe, many of them in West Germany. NBC's Brian Stewart reports tonight on this decision and the possible snag. The decision followed a fierce debate that almost split the coalition government. But there's one key condition. Government leaders insist West Germany keep 72 Pershing 1A missiles that are operated by its soldiers. The nuclear warheads, however, would remain under U.S. control. We are not blocking progress, but we have to be uh, related to uh, German security, and uh, that's our main purpose. And uh, we fully understand NATO positions, we fully understand uh, French and British positions, we fully understand U.S. positions. And we think that everyone understands that we have German positions as well. Analysts feel the German demand could be a problem for arms negotiators, but not a fatal one. I think the German decision to insist on retaining the Persian ones will complicate the negotiation. But I don't think, given the eagerness of both sides to reach an agreement, that it's going to prove an insurmountable obstacle. West Germans fear loss of a nuclear umbrella entirely would leave them vulnerable to superior Soviet bloc conventional armed strength. For people like Ellen Budenz, who works weekends in her parents' restaurant near the border with East Germany, there's still real fear of a Soviet invasion. Not all of them should be taken out. Why not? Well, as I said, we need protection, don't we? And um, you really trust, uh, we don't really trust the Russians. Many Germans, however, seem ready, like their government, to take the risk. I think they have discussed that topic for very long and intensive, so it's certainly a good decision. The government appears to have had little choice. It has been under mounting pressure from the public and its own NATO allies. Despite misgivings, even the conservatives here could not stand alone against the powerful momentum of East-West arms initiatives.
Brian Stewart, NBC News, Frankfurt.